All right, so we've done uh, a lot of examples where we've calculated the derivative of a function at a point. Um, and we see it's, it's kind of a tedious process sometimes, uh, you know, especially if you have square roots or rational functions or even just uh, stuff with any kind of numerator and denominator. Uh, it can get kind of tedious and kind of messy sometimes. So what if uh, we have to find the derivative of a function, of the same function, uh, at a bunch of different points? Do we have to go through that process over and over and over again? Uh, and the answer is no, thank God we don't. Um, and the reason is uh, we can just calculate the, or we can just find the derivative function. So instead of finding the derivative at a point, we just find the derivative as a function um, and then go from there. So that might sound kind of weird or confusing, maybe not, but um, once we start doing this with some examples, it'll make a lot of sense. So uh, first of all, uh, let's get the definition out of the way. So the uh, derivative of f of x is f primed of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x uh, all divided by h. All right. So this is a very important definition here. So a few videos ago we actually had a definition like this, which, but uh, the difference is that one was the derivative at a point so that other definition was for the derivative of a function at a point x equals c, right? Uh, but the only difference here is now, you know, in the other video we had c and c and c. But the only difference here is now we just have x and x and x. So what we're going to do uh, is find the derivative as a function and then use that function to find uh, the value of the derivative at multiple points. So let's see what we're talking about here. Um, example 1. Uh, let's see, let's say g of x equals x squared plus 3x minus 1, and we want to find g primed of 2, uh, g primed of, oops, 0, and g primed of negative 1. Okay. So we want to find all three of these things here. So uh, the point here is that luckily we don't have to go through the process three different times here. Right? So we just have this one function g of x. So what we could do is just leave it as x and then do the derivative the same way we've been doing. And then what we're going to get is a function instead of an actual number. And then we're going to, uh, that function is going to be g primed of x, which is the derivative. And then we're just going to plug 2, 0, and negative 1 into there separately. And then we'll just get our answers from there. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so g primed of x now equals uh, the limit as h goes to 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x all divided by h. Okay. So what's different now is because uh, we're not working with any numbers, okay, we just have x's and h's. So things might be a little more uh, messy algebraically, but um, it's not too bad because we're still going to use the same techniques that we would have used uh, or that we've been using before when we had numbers instead of x. So first we just want to see, all right, what's g of x plus h? So let's come up here and figure out what that is. So g of x plus h equals, well, g of x is x squared plus 3x minus 1. So g of x plus h is x plus h squared plus 3 times the quantity x plus h and then minus 1. Okay, So when we uh, expand, so this is just going to be foiling, right? x plus h times x plus h. Uh, foil that, we get x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. And then here we have plus 3x plus 3h and then minus 1. All right, so now we want to look and see, is there anything that we can simplify, combine like terms? Uh, no. Ugh, so that's kind of a mess, right? Um, and, you know, that's going to happen because we just have x's and h's and not actual numbers. Um, but that's okay. So here, g of x, this is nice because, you know, we don't have to calculate anything. We just, we're given g of x here. So we're just going to put that in there. So uh, this equals the limit 
as h goes to zero of big old line here. So g of x plus h was this uh, big mess up here. All right. So that's um, x squared plus 2hx plus h squared plus 3x plus 3h minus 1. All right. So that's all g of x plus h. And now we're going to subtract g of x. So um, minus, what's g of x? It's x squared plus 3x minus 1. Uh, all this is divided by h. Now, is, uh, is that correct what I wrote? So uh, if you're following along, you're probably wondering, hey, wait, something's wrong. And yeah, something is wrong. Uh, we're subtracting g of x from all this. And what I forgot to do here uh, intentionally, honestly, um, is put parentheses around this. Okay, so be very, very, very careful about that. Um, here, this whole thing, this is worth pointing out, uh, this whole thing here is g of x plus h, right? And this whole thing here is g of x. And remember, we're doing g of x plus h minus g of x, right? So we have to have parentheses around this part here because we're subtracting all of g of x. So these parentheses, they are absolutely necessary. Um, and in fact, if you leave them off, uh, then you're going to run into problems later and you'll see that something's wrong anyway. But, um, all right, so we have this. So now what we want to do is, uh, let's drop these parentheses. So in order to do that, we have to distribute the minus sign. So this is going to become minus x squared minus 3x and then plus 1. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll get that out of the way too. So this is... Uh, minus uh, minus x squared, I forgot what it was, minus 3x plus 1. Okay. Alright, so now that's good, um, because now, let's go ahead and get rid of this guy too, uh, just so it's easier to see what's happening here. Okay. So now we're just going to, um, we're running out of room, so we'll just do it here. Uh, but here, here's an x squared, let's see if we can combine that with anything. Uh, blah, 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 minus x squared. So x squared minus x squared, those cancel. That's great. So cancel here, cancel here. That's wonderful. 2hx, um, is that combined with anything? No. Okay, we have h's and x's, but this is the only one that has both of them at the same time. Uh, h squared, that's the only h squared appearing here. How about 3x? Plus 3x, blah, 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 minus 3x. So those cancel. That's wonderful. Plus 3x, minus 3x. How about that plus 3h? Uh, no, we're just kind of stuck with it for now. Um, and then minus 1, da, 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 plus 1. So those cancel, and that's wonderful. Okay, so notice what we're left with. Um, everything on the top has an h in it, right? 2hx plus h squared plus 3h. And that's good because um, now we can factor an h from the top and cancel it with the bottom. And that's what we want to do, right? Remember, that's, um, that's our ultimate goal with this stuff is to... Uh, you know, simplify so that eventually we can cancel this h because this h is causing us problems because we're taking a limit as h goes to zero. So we want to get rid of this guy here. So um, going back to the earlier point we made, uh, if we forgot the parentheses around here, then what would have happened is, you know, uh, the ones wouldn't have canceled and the three x's wouldn't have canceled. So you would have been stuck with something up here that didn't have an h in it. And then at that point you would say, okay, something's wrong. So we have to go back and try again. So that's why you've got to have those parentheses there. I uh, want to be very careful about that. Okay, so now um, let's come up here. Actually, let's, uh, all right, two, zero, negative one. Let's try and remember that. So let's uh, come a little higher up. So we'll come all the way up here. Um, so this is now going to equal the limit as h goes to zero of what do we have left over? We had 2hx plus h squared plus 3h all on the top. So that's uh, 2hx plus h squared plus 3h. All that's on the top, and then on the bottom we just have an h. So, um, you know, like we already said, we're just going to factor the h from the top. So this is limits as h approaches zero of uh, h times 2x plus another h, plus 3. All right, and then we solve the h on the bottom. So these cancel. That's lovely. Um, now what? Now this equals the limits as h goes to 0 
of what's left, 2x plus h plus 3. And uh, this is a very straightforward direct substitution now. Um, if we take a limit as h goes to 0, this part's just 0. So now we just have 2x plus 3 left. So uh, this equals 2x plus 3. All right? So what we actually just found was uh, g primed of x equals 2x plus 3. All right? So the original question was uh, find g primed of uh, 2 g primed of 0 and g primed of negative 1. So instead of going through this whole process three times with three different numbers, we're just going to do it once with x. And now we have this derivative function here, and we could just use this function uh, to find those three values. And from here, it's pretty much just like a pre-calculus uh, type of thing. We're just evaluating a function now. So um, let's pull out a different color. So g primed of 2 equals just plug it into the function, uh, 2 times 2 plus 3, which is uh, 7, all right? And uh, g prime to 0 was the other one, the second one we wanted. So that's just going to be 2 times 0 plus 3, which is just 3. And then g prime of uh, negative 1, was it? Yeah, g prime to negative 1 equals 2 times negative 1 plus 3. So that's negative 2 plus 3 which is uh, 1. Okay, so see how simple that was. Um, you know, if we went through this process three different times with these numbers here, um, it just would have been a, a big giant headache just to do that three times in a row. Um, so to save ourselves the trouble, we just leave it as x, and we do it once, and then we get this derivative function here. So, um, and you know, what we say is if uh, g of x equals x squared plus 3x minus 1, so uh, the derivative of g of x is g prime of x equals 2x plus 3. Okay, so that's example one. Let's do another one in the next video.